Alright, this is the sixth and last lecture for text unit six on atoms and their electrons. In this lecture, we examine orbital diagrams for ions and periodic properties of atoms. Ions, as we all know, are atoms with electrons added or removed. In the case of anion, you add electrons, add electrons, and the atom acquires a negative charge. Electrons are added to the lowest energy orbital available to make the most stable arrangement. Right. Consider a natural ion like fluoride, F minus. Note the negative one charge. This naturally occurring ion has an electron added. Oh, here is an orbital diagram for fluorine the 1s, the 2s, and 2p subshells. If we add an electron to the lowest energy orbital available, that's this 2p orbital right here. Note that uh, the next orbital up is 3s with a higher n value. Right. So the orbital diagram for fluorine looks like this, 1s, 2s, and a filled 2p subshell. Here is the added electron. Alright, at this point you're ready to attempt diagrams for the naturally occurring anions of phosphorus and sulfur. Draw a diagram of the atom, then the ion. Here is phosphorus. No core abbreviations here. I show all the electrons. So here are the 1s, 2s, 2p, and 3s electrons, and 3p electrons, as you would predict by counting. The naturally occurring anion, remember, for this elements in this column is phosphide with a negative 3 charge. So we add 3 electrons to the 3p subshell. And that provides this diagram for phosphide. Here is sulfur. Again, we can count four 3p electrons. We know it's in the third row, so the valence electrons are in n equals 3. The naturally occurring anion is sulfide. We add two electrons to the diagram. And again, the 3p subshell is complete. In both cases, the nonmetal anions have added enough electrons to complete the valence P subshell. Note valence S and P subshells are filled. This stable arrangement or configuration is called an octet. And that's why these ions are the naturally occurring ones. And we found that simply by adding electrons as necessary to the lowest energy orbitals. Notice when you add electrons, well, all right, let's move on. Cations are atoms with electrons removed. Consider sodium, which forms sodium plus in compounds. Here's an orbital diagram for sodium. No core abbreviation. All right, and here it is with the core abbreviation. Note that the 1s, 2s, 2p electrons, the electron configuration with argon, are replaced with the argon core in this place. When a cation is formed from an atom, the valence electrons are removed, the ones on the outside. So the sodium cation has an electron removed from the 3s orbital. All right. A helium core, that's a helium core, not a neon core, I had to correct a typo there, replaces the 1s electrons. The 3s electron is gone. And we have filled 2s and 2p subshells. 
These used to be core electrons, but now they're valence. They have the highest n value. So again, this cation has an octet. Filled valence S and P subshells. This is why the naturally occurring cations form. Show that to yourself by attempting calcium on the next page. Diagrams for atom and ion and use core abbreviations. Calcium cation is argon core and 4s. If we pull those two electrons out to form Ca2+, for example, the electrons are now the valence electrons are now the n equals 3 electrons, the valence 3s and 3p. Naturally the core is neon. Again, calcium plus has an octet. This is the configuration for argon, in fact. But remember, you can't just show a core abbreviation in an orbital diagram. Yeah, so the valence electrons show here. In other words, we couldn't replace all this with the symbol for argon. <clears throat> all right. Transition metal cations are a bit trickier. Valence electrons are removed first. All right, so to illustrate, here is the iron atom with 6d electrons, as you predict from the table. Argon core and the 4s subshell filled. Make an iron, too. Valence electrons go first. The two electrons that go are the 4s electrons. To remove D electrons, you have to make iron 3 plus, another naturally occurring cation. And we have to remove a D electron. Note that we choose the D electron removed to satisfy Hun's rule. In other words, if we're going to leave five electrons in the 3D subshell, we have to have them spread out one per orbital. All right, now to move for the last topic for this unit, periodic trends and atomic properties. The ionization energy is defined as the energy required to remove an electron from the atom. For example, you can go from O to O plus. This means an this is the electron that's been taken away. And the ionization energy is 1,319 kilojoules per mole of oxygen atoms. And you can just imagine removing a valence 2p electron to make 2O+. It's not the number which is so important here as the trends. Oh no, again let me emphasize these are not necessarily naturally occurring ions. These numbers come out of a physics lab. However, the trend in these numbers as that they increase as one goes across the periodic table. This is because the valence of the electrons does not increase. They have the same n value. But the nuclear charge is increasing. So the electrons are, which are attracted to positive charge are pulled closer to the nucleus. Or, or held more tightly, I should say, by the nucleus. All right, so this number increases as you go across. The, elect the nucleus holds the electrons more tightly as th the attraction goes up. It decreases as one goes down. Valence electrons are farther away from the nucleus, farther away from that positive charge in the nucleus, and more loosely held as you go down. As you go down, the N value increases and the valence electrons are further and further away. So increases as you go across, decreases as you go down. Very easily summarized on our periodic table. We expect to see a general increase in ionization energy as we go across a row, and a decrease in ionization energy as we go down a column. So oxygen should have a higher ionization energy than nitrogen but nitrogen should have a higher ionization energy than phosphorus, etc.
There are also predictable trends in atomic size or radius of atoms. Size decreases going across the table. As the nuclear charge increases, the electrons are held more tightly, as we saw. And this makes the ionization energy go up. It takes more energy to pull an electron off. The electrons also get closer to the nucleus as the nuclear charge increases. And again, note all the electrons are in the same valence shell. So atoms get smaller as you go across the periodic table in general. And in general, their size increases as you go down. The end value of the valence shell increases and electrons are farther from the nucleus, making the atom bigger. Right, you can summarize these trends here in, in this way. Size decreases as you go across a row. Size increases as you go down a column of the periodic table. So again, turning to this section, oxygen is smaller than nitrogen. Phosphorus is larger than nitrogen, and arsenic will be larger than phosphorus, and so on. This concludes the final presentation for Unit 6.